What's up, CoderBite? Welcome back to another Data Structures and Algorithms video. I'm Elizabeth, and today we're doing our second part of our patterns mini-series all about the pattern using fast and slow-moving pointers. I would say this is about a medium uh, difficulty problem and builds on what we covered last week. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I highly suggest you check that out. Otherwise, let's get into this week's problem. All right, as per usual, let's go over the pattern before we get started on this week's problem. So fast and slow pointers, what are they? What am I talking about? The fast and slow pointer approach, otherwise known as the hare and tortoise algorithm, is a pointer algorithm that uses two pointers which move through an array at different speeds, emphasis on different speeds. This approach is especially useful when dealing with cyclic, linked lists, or arrays, or figuring out if there is a cycle in the linked list or array. By moving at different speeds, the algorithm proves that the two pointers are bound to meet if there is a cycle. The fast pointer should catch the slow pointer once both the pointers are in a cyclic loop. So like I said last week, imagine two runners on a track. If there is a fast runner and a slow runner, the fast runner will always meet the slow runner eventually because it's cyclic in nature, right? A track is a cycle. So that's kind of where if, if, if the problem has something to do with a cycle, determining if there's a cycle, something like that, this pattern is especially useful for these kinds of problems. So what is this week's problem? Given an integer, oh, that's a typo, but I'm gonna leave it in because we love mistakes at CoderBite. We are very pro good enough and not perfect, right? That's a very key point in your coding journey. Excuse me while I go off on a rant. It's very difficult to get anything perfect in life. So, you know, sometimes you just, you just have to be satisfied with good enough. So given a integer, write a function to determine if after repeatedly replacing it with an integer equal to the sum of the square of all of its digits, which is kind of hard to imagine, but I'm gonna show you an example in a second, leads us to the number one. So let's look at an example of this. So let's say we have an input of 23. The output we would expect would be true. And why is that? So let's go through this step by step. So first we take the square of each digit in the integer that we were given. So two squared is four, three squared is nine, four plus nine is 13. Then we do it again. One squared is one, three squared is nine, one plus nine is 10, so we get 10, let's do it again. One squared is one, zero squared is zero, that equals one, that's why the output is true, because ultimately it leads us to the number one after squaring each digit of every integer that we can until we get to one. So let's look at an example where it doesn't lead to one and where our output would be false. Let's do a giant check mark first, because I love that anvil. Um, okay, input 12, output is false. So let's walk through this. So one squared plus two squared, one plus four is five, great. Five squared, that's 25, great. Two squared plus five squared, that equals 29. Okay, there's gonna be a lot of these. Two squared plus nine squared, that's 85. Eight squared plus five squared, that's 89. Uh, eight squared plus nine squared is 145, and so on and so forth. You can fill this out if you really desire on your own time. Um, finally, the 13th step, if you were to fill out all of those, is five squared plus eight squared. So that means the number before it was equal to 58, the sum of the squares of the integer that came before it, and that equals 89. So what happens here? So we see that we already have seen 89. We've already gotten to 89 at some point. It was different before it was eight squared plus five squared. This time it's five squared plus eight squared, but it still leads us to the same place, 89. Now, what does this look like to you? It's a cycle in this linked list of integers, right? So you'll see when the output is false, it will get caught in some cycle at some point and it will never get to one. If it gets to one, it will end at one because squares, that's how that works, right? The one squared is always gonna be one. So I'm giving away the approach, but the approach is basically going to be create a linked list of all of these integers and determine if there's a cycle or not. Because if there is one, that means the output will be false. If there isn't one and we get to the number one, 
the output will be true. So let's watch a visualization of how we're going to do this in code. Um, so this is the hare and tortoise approach, fast and slow moving pointers. So let's take the first example from the slide before. The input is 23. And our slow pointer is going to move one node at a time, and our fast pointer is going to move two nodes at a time. And this is the same speed that we used in last week's video because we're still determining whether there's a cycle in the linked list. And it's this speed is, these speeds are good for determining cycles in a linked list. And if you want more information about that, again, check out last week's video, review last week's video, or do some Googling. Okay, so we first, we start our, our first node in our linked list is going to be the integer 23, which we were passed. And we initialize our slow pointer and our fast pointer at 23. This is again, this should all be review. It's just a different application of the same ideas. So our first step, we do two squared plus three squared, that gives us 13. So that is our next node in the linked list that we are constructing. So rather than being given a linked list, now we're constructing a linked list, which is the sum of the squares of the digits of each integer as we go. So our slow mover, our slow pointer moves one node, so we're at 13. One squared plus three squared, one plus nine is 10. So we're gonna add that node to our linked list. And that's where our fast pointer is going to go. Because remember, our fast pointer is moving at 2x speed. So it skips over 13 and it goes straight to 10. And at this point, we already know what happens. Our slow mover, our slow pointer, um, you know, also iterates, right? It moves up. Um, and we get one squared plus zero squared, which ultimately equals one. And we can return true at this point. So that's this algorithm. Right, so that's one. So we've reached an end. There's no cycle. We just, we got to one and that's what's important. And it actually doesn't matter which pointer gets to one first. As long as we get to one at all, we know that we can return true. So that's kind of it for the visualization for this al algorithm. Um, let's code this out. All right, as per usual, I am in my Visual Studio Code editor and I have a totally blank file here, which we are about to fill out. So let's get started. Um, okay, so the first thing we have to do is define our function and create some test cases, right? So let's say our function is going to be called sign ultimate one because ultimately we're looking for an ultimate one. Um, okay, so this is going to take a number, right? That's going to be our integer that initially gets passed in. And then down here, we can just add our test cases from the slides. So let's say find ultimate one 23 and find ultimate one, I think I did 12, yeah. Okay, so this one we're expecting to be true and this one we're expecting to be false. Um, all right, so I think that's all we need for now. Um, so let's see so the first thing we need to do is we need to define our fast and slow pointers so let's say let slow pointer equals num and fast pointer also equal num because we're starting them at the same place and then what i'm thinking here is that i'm probably going to want to do some sort of loop right like we've been we're like we're used to doing maybe like a while loop or something and I probably want to, right, I'm going to have to have some functionality to actually find what is the sum of the square of all the digits of a number. So I'm thinking right off the bat, I'm probably going to define another function, a helper function, which is going to be uh, find the square sum, right? And I'm going to call that from within my loop when I'm actually iterating through my linked list of integers. So let's define that right here. Let's say find square sum. And this is also going to take an integer. And let's fill this out first. And this is, in my opinion, the really fun piece of this algorithm because it's like a cool, like, oh, numbers, interesting. Um, okay, so find the square sum. So let's define our sum to be zero. And that's what we're gonna build on. And then we basically are going to want to get the square, right, of each digit. So how do we find what is a digit in a number, right? How, how do we get like just the one digit at a certain place in the number? So what's super cool because, um, you know, in our number system is base 10, 
what we can do is we can use, use the modulus, I think that's what it's called, modulus operator, um, and basically do the num mod 10, because we're working with numbers that are base 10. And essentially, if we divide a number by 10 and get the remainder, we will get the digit, right? The digit, right? Let's take an example. So let's say we have uh, 14 and we do 14 mod 10. So that would equal four because 14 divided by 10 is one and then the remainder is four. So just like that, we have that, that digit, right? So um, that's, I thought that was super cool when I, when I figured that one out. So let's say that we're gonna be updating the num as we get each digit. So let's say while the num is greater than zero, because when we get to zero, that means we've gotten all of the digits, if that makes sense. So the digit we are looking at is going to be num mod 10, like I said. And then we're going to add whatever that digit is, the square of it, to our sum. So let's say the sum plus equals the digit times the digit. And then the last thing we have to do is we have to remove whatever digit we got from that num. So then what we do is we do the num equals math.floor because just in case we get a, you know, something is not um, totally round, um, we just do num divided by 10, right? So let's take that example that we were just talking about. Uh, so our number is 14. So we do 14 mod 10, which gives us four. We add four times four to our sum. And then when we divide 14 by 10, we get 1.4 and then we floor that and then we're left with just that one. So that's kind of cool. I don't know, maybe I'm a nerd. Actually, I'm definitely a nerd, but I thought that was super fun. Okay, so that's it for this. Then we just have to return the sum, of course. Okay, so now we have our nice helper function here. So let's go back up to our find ultimate one function. And let's basically what we want to do is we want to determine is there a cycle, right? So basically, if there's a cycle, our slow pointer will equal our fast pointer, right? Because that's the definition of a cycle that our fast moving pointer reaches from behind our slow moving pointer. Okay, so if there is a cycle, we want to return false, right? If there isn't a cycle, so what's going to happen if there isn't a cycle? That means either slow pointer or fast pointer will equal one, right? So eventually we found a one and that was the end of the road for us. So that's kind of our blueprint for how we're going to, you know, approach this. And I think I'm going to just use a while loop with a true condition, and I'm gonna break out of it if any of these things happen at any point. So let's do that down here. So let's say while true. So this is gonna run until it breaks, essentially. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is we want to have our slow pointer be now pointed at find the square sum of the number, right? Oh no, excuse me, not of the number, of the slow pointer, because that, that's going to be wherever that slow pointer is, is at that moment, we want to basically move it to the next linked list node, which is actually just conceptual. We don't have a linked list here. We're actually just, you know, this is just going to be at runtime. This is going to be constructing this. It's, it's almost like as the um, function calls add to the stack, that is our linked list, which is also kind of cool if you're a nerd. Um, so slow pointer is now equal to the, uh, the next, right? The finding the square sum of whatever is at, whatever the slow pointer is pointed at at this moment. Um, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna move our fast pointer, right? So let's say our fast pointer is gonna move two ahead, right? So we wanna, call, we want to move our fast pointer to find the square sum of find the square sum of the fast pointer. And what that's going to do is it's just going to find the square sum 
right? It's basically, it's doing that work twice, which obviously we can optimize, but I want to write it out just so people understand and it's super clear that we're just finding the square sum of the next one and then of the next one after that. So it still has to make that leap to make that leap. Um, but yeah, so that's basically, that's moving ahead our pointers here. Okay, so we have our slow pointer and our fast pointer. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we just wanna incorporate our logic, right? All of that stuff. So let's say if the slow pointer is equal to the fast pointer, we wanna break, right? So that's, that's that first, this case. There's a cycle and we can exit early. If the slow pointer, um, or the fast pointer, let's see, if the slow pointer equals one, or the fast pointer equals one, we want to return true. And then down here, we can say, you know, actually, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Instead of breaking, we can just return false, you know, here, because we know already that it's gonna be false. Um, okay, and I actually think that that's it for this algorithm. So this is another very short, sweet, simple one. So let's run our test cases. Well, why are you giant? Let's see the videos, pattern. All right, let's do this. All right, so we get true and false, which is exactly what we hope to get. Wonderful, I love when that happens. All right, so I think this is, again, the whole point here is actually not the code itself. The code itself is very simple. It's very short, it's very succinct. Um, the key here is understanding how we can use this pattern to approach this problem that doesn't seem on the on the surface that it has anything to do with finding cycles in a linked list, right? But if you know this and you can figure out that there will be a cycle in the integers list if it was ne it's never going to get to one, that's the key piece here is knowing to apply this pattern to this sort of problem. And then obviously this little bit, I think is like, you know, you can stumble on that, but those are basically the main points of this. So I hope everyone liked this. And that's a wrap everybody. That's this week's problem. I love this week's problem. I know I say that every week, but you know, I, I love them all. What can I say? Um, but I really like this one because it's a great, great, great example of why knowing these interview problem patterns is so useful because if you start to sense that there's, oh, this problem kind of might fall into the, is there a cycle in this linked list bucket? Do I have a pattern for that? Yes, I do. Just plug and play, right? So I think this really illustrates why this series, this interview problems pattern series is so, so important and key for crushing all those interviews and being able to do all of the infinite number of interview problems out there with a limited number of tools and resources at your fingertips. So join us next week. We are going to do a hard problem, super hard problem. I don't know yet, I haven't picked it, but um, we're gonna really you know, take this, this pattern home. And um, yeah, stay tuned. I hope everyone is well. Thank you, bye guys.